Florida Congressman Matt Gates wants everyone to be hyped about what is next for Tucker Carlson after his shock exit from Fox News, tweeting, OMG, wait till everyone sees what Tucker has planned. While we don't know what that is yet, Carlson's first statement after his exit from Fox News has garnered 57 million views in less than 24 hours. For reference, Carlson's primetime show on Fox averaged just over 3 million viewers a night. According to a new report in the New York Times, the day before Dominion Voting System's defamation trial against Fox was set to begin, the Fox Board of Directors made a startling discovery of, yes, more unseen texts by Carlson about Fox management. Forbes has published a number of these texts. One message from Carlson to an unknown receiver said, quote, those efforts are destroying our credibility, blaming Fox's controversies on, quote, a combination of incompetent incompetent liberals and top leadership without with too much pride to back down. <laughs> OK. Well, I I've heard from some reporting from my friend Greg Price that Fox actually knew about these texts a year ago. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not sure how accurate this reporting is. It almost seems to me like Fox is maybe trying to leak out the reasons for Tucker's exit because people are really angry with them. But it's hard to know at this point what the real reason is because nobody will just outright tell us. Right. I, you know, again, this is this is the thing. Fox is absolutely afraid of its audience. We saw that um, after this is the whole thing with Dominion is right. like they were afraid. They were afraid people were going to go to Newsmax. Then they fired Tucker Carlson. And of course, people are going to Newsmax right now. And so they are deathly afraid. They want to show some sort of reasoning. This is why they leaked the, the uh, alleged slur that Tucker allegedly used for one of the women, right. the women executives. They're, they're trying to cover their tracks, but they don't want to explicitly come out on air and say, you know, he was problematic or he's costing us money or whatever the cause is uh, I think they're trying to, again, w walk a tightrope. And a lot of times when you walk tight ropes, you fall. So mm. we'll see what happens with Fox. Here. I like that analogy. Um, and, you know, the whole Dominion lawsuit, perhaps being the impetus for the exit, um, will become clearer if that's the case over the next couple of months, because there are other Fox anchors who are named in that lawsuit who still have jobs at the network. So yeah. it would be interesting if Tucker was the only person who was let go uh, because of that, especially since he was the person who on air really uh, pushed back on Sidney Powell's claim to have evidence right. of voter fraud. Um, but I'm really interested to see what he does next. My best guess is that he does something independent, right? Because he has these personal studios in Florida and in Maine. The clip that he posted on Twitter, I think, was from his Maine studio. It looked like the one that he mm -hmm. um, tapes Tucker Carlson today on. Um, at least that's my best guess. And the fact that that video got almost 60 million views just by posting on Twitter is absolutely bonkers. I don't know if you saw this too, but the Rumble CEO commented below his tweet with a heart emoji. So is Tucker going to start a new show and post on Rumble? Uh, we'll see. I think it would make the most sense for him to go independent. Uh, he obviously does not need to have another boss. Uh, right. I don't think that that works very well for Tucker. And we've seen that he can build a media company. He built the, the Daily Caller. Um, he doesn't own it anymore, but he built that. So we know that he has the capability to do that. Uh, as you said, he's got the studios. Uh, there are many people in this business who would want to work, particularly on the right, who would love to work for Tucker Carlson. Uh, and he still has a whole lot of influence. He's got Matt Gates, who's in government, sitting there tweeting at him, uh, so I, or tweeting about him. So I think Tucker, uh, from what I'm hearing, he's going to be sidelined for about 18 months. That's mm -hmm. the reporting. He's getting $1.6 million uh, a month. So he can, you know, kind of stack some money up and build something really, really uh, influential. Uh, and building your own thing isn't easy. You know, we, we've seen O'Reilly building his own thing. And while I interviewed him and O'Reilly was like, yeah, I'm making tons more money than I did at Fox, I was like, Really? You sure? We, we sure about that? <laughs> you sure about that? Uh, but that, that's what he claims. And I don't think that his no spin news has really taken off. Uh, but I think Tucker is in a different category. Tucker 
We've seen uh, he has connections here and overseas, and there are a lot of su- there's a lot of support out there for him. Fox is trying to mitigate some of this damage, but they're going to take a hit. I don't know how large that hit will be and how long it will last, but they're going to take a hit, and I'm sure they're glad that Tucker is sidelined for the election season, yeah. and they hope that people will still tune in for their election news. Right, yeah. I think Tucker's going to be just fine, but it is really a bummer that we're not going to hear his voice heading into the 2024 election. Um, he has been a shaper of conservative politics for the past seven years that he's been on air. He's been a very original voice. He's sort of helped craft the the principles and the ideology behind what was Trumpism in 2016 and made it sort of a coherent philosophy. Um, and he also covers stories that nobody else talks about. I mean, he has this pizza man on his show who tripped a would-be carjacker. He talks about the UFO reports that come out of the federal government. It was just such a unique angle for a cable news show, particularly one that was airing on primetime. So Mm -hmm. I think it's a shame that we're not going to have his voice. Um, Maybe there's some way they can negotiate the exit package more quickly. Of course, Fox (laughs) is not going to want that. And uh, from the preliminary things that we've seen regarding the ratings, it looks like the typical ratings for Tucker's hour, the 8 p.m. hour, were maybe about half of what they normally would be this week. Um, I think I heard 20 percent. They're down 20 percent. Down 20 percent. Yeah. So that's that's significant. Yeah, that's huge for cable. And he's down significantly in that prime demographic, which is the uh, 25 to 54 age range, which is the younger viewers. Um, Tucker, I think, was the best performing person on cable news for that demographic. That's what advertisers really look at. Now, the flip side of this is that a lot of advertisers fled Fox News from Tucker's show because of these organized boycotts from places like Media Matters. Um, So if they get someone in there who is a little bit more palatable to um, some of the corporations that might be advertising on Fox, then maybe they can make up for the lost ratings in advertiser revenue. Yeah, that, that's possible. I, I'm thinking about the, the Fox talent. I don't see anybody who uh, can take Tucker's place. Maybe Gutfield. I don't know. But uh, it's going to be tough to replace Tucker Carlson, um, you know, regardless of what you think about his politics. Uh, I absolutely think they're absolutely insane. But <laughs> I will say this. Um, he is a generational talent yes. when it comes to this media stuff and this media business. So And a great writer. I hope he starts writing columns again. Yeah, no, he is a very good writer. I and you know, I've interviewed him. I've been on I was a regular on his show for about two years. Um I, I know him and he's he's really good at what he does. And I think whatever he launches is gonna be successful. Kind of like rising. And we'll <laughs> be back with more rising. <laughs> 